The Alcazar is the Royal Palace of Sevilla, renowned as one of the most beautiful buildings in Spain. There was previously a Muslim fortress on this site about a thousand years ago, which was entirely rebuilt in the 1300s and 1400s after the reconquest of Spain. Today, the Alcazar is an outstanding example of Mudéjar architecture, which is that special blend of Muslim and Spanish styles that displays very elaborate ornamentation. Well, for the next several hundred years, the complex expanded and grew into one of the grandest palaces in Europe. Declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1987, it's one of the most popular attractions in Spain and a must-see while you're in Sevilla. The visit includes the Alcazar Gardens with their labyrinths of flower-lined walks and glorious date palms, bananas, orange trees, and citron groves. There really is a pleasing spot within the palace enclosure. The Alcazar is situated just next to the cathedral, so it's very easy to find it. We walked through the Alcazar with a local guide, which is always a great way to learn more about a place. You don't have to go fumbling for books or walking through without understanding what you're looking at. Let's listen in for a minute. We are inside the Alcázar. Sometimes it is called Reales Alcázares. The word Alcázar is an Arabic word that means royal palace. We are now in the oldest royal palace of Europe, which still is in use since the 13th century until nowadays this has always been the official residence of the royal family of spain here in sevilla in andalusia this is the, the courtyard from where we can see the several buildings that we have over here gothic palace that was the first palace built by the christians when they came to sevilla short after the reconquest of Sevilla. Then we have the Palacio Mudéjar, which was built in the 14th century. That is the most important one. And that is the Casa de la Contratación, built in the 16th century. The name means House of Trade, for this building was the main headquarters in Spain for bringing all the goods and treasures from the New World, which had just been discovered. This Casa de la Contratación was opened in 1503, and it performed the task of the receipt of the goods and technical and judicial activities related to it, including settling lawsuits between traders and other kinds of government functions that it continued overseeing for the next 300 years out of this building and what had been vast warehouses all around it. Now it's a museum, as is the rest of the Alcazar that we'll be now walking through the Alcazar, or Royal Palace, was first built as a smaller fortress by the Moors from the year 913 and then enlarged by their Spanish successors. It is still used occasionally by the royal family. In 1364, King Pedro I began construction of what would continue growing over the centuries into one of the most important palaces in Europe, further expanded by Ferdinand and Isabella, who used it as headquarters for their conquest of the New World, and it was later altered by the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. It is definitely worth paying the admission to visit inside this gorgeous palace, preferably with a local guide who can tell you all about it. This doll's court is named for these two human figures, which is a rare example in the otherwise geometric motifs. You then walk through the most beautiful Moorish arches in the entire palace on our way to the most important room of all, the Hall of the Ambassadors. This Salon de los Embajadores is the finest apartment in the palace. The magnificent half orange ceiling of carved wood rests on a frieze decorated with the tower and the lion. The hall is about 33 feet square and shows a splendid combination of various styles of Gothic and Renaissance. The ornamentation is rich and elaborate, almost beyond the possibility of description. You have to be here, really, to experience it. Most of the ceilings are carved in dark wood in a similar style, 
some of which looks like fine lace, especially in the gilded dome of the Ambassador's Hall, built in 1427. There are chapels and audience rooms and private living areas for the royal family, connected by chambers, short hallways, and small gardens. The rooms are decorated with elaborate, detailed carvings that cover nearly every square inch of wall and ceiling. The mostly geometric and floral patterns are done in the Mudehar style, meaning it was created by Muslim craftsmen with their traditional techniques, but during the Christian period. Muslim decorations generally do not depict any living creatures. They are mostly geometric motifs. Many of the rooms are built around spectacular courtyards in the Mediterranean tradition. A typical courtyard is carefully composed of basic elements that work together in creating a harmonious space insulated from outside noises by the surrounding walls and often with a lush garden and fountain in the center. Most ornamentations throughout the palace are stucco, which is made of plaster mixed with marble dust and set in place to partially dry but not completely harden so that it could be easily shaped with a hammer and chisel. The design was planned in advance and then applied to the pliable surface to form a relief sculpture that would later harden and last for the ages. The burble of water not only provides a welcome, cool visual relief in this sometimes hot environment, but creates a relaxing sound that mesmerizes you into a peaceful mood. Birds chirping amongst the luxuriant vegetation add another dimension to the calm atmosphere. The gardens are a most pleasing spot within the enclosure. They form a delicious presence where the orange and citron diffuse their fragrance and magic fountains spring up suddenly beneath the traveler's feet, sprinkling with the cooling dew. The gardens actually open up earlier than the palace, so if you're up first thing in the day and you want to get a head start, take a walk in the gardens and then you can be first in line for entering the al Khazar Palace. And then you can walk up steps to the second level, which gives you a beautiful panorama view over the gardens as you stroll along through the arcaded hallway. Parts of the second floor are still utilized by the royal family today as their private residence and official rooms for functionings. The lush gardens behind the Alcazar Palace offer a serene, green oasis of terraces, fountains, flowers, and exotic trees connected by a series of long walkways with benches for you to relax on while enjoying the views. You could spend a couple of hours strolling through this verdant mix of Moorish, Renaissance and 19th century landscape architecture. The gardens do open earlier than the palace, so you could start your visit here or save it for the end and enjoy the gardens on your way out. We are going to see several trees like this one. This is a kapok tree, similar to the cotton, and it has these beautiful flowers that they flourish now at this time of the year, at the very end of the summer. Alcazar is an Arab word meaning fortress, but this sprawling complex obviously became more of a pleasure palace than a military installation. King Pedro brought in Moorish craftsmen from Muslim-occupied Granada who applied many of the same techniques they used in construction of the Alhambra. The surviving section of Pedro's original palace is one of the finest examples of Mudejar architecture still surviving in Spain. When finished with the palace and gardens, walk across the plaza for a visit to the other most important site in town. In the next segment, we will take you into Sevilla's crowning glory, the world's largest Gothic cathedral. We have got more movies about Sevilla and other parts of Spain on our YouTube channel, where you'll also find a thousand movies about Europe and some other parts of the world. If you're enjoying the program, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you'll be notified about all of the new movies that we're regularly uploading.